Scott Andrew. Thank you, Fraser. Um, so I just want to say that um, I basically agree with everything that Derek and Ian have put forward um, in regards to the importance of the environment. Um, anyone out there that says that there's some sort of opinion that's relevant when it comes to the need to align our economic system with the environment and the carrying capacity of the planet um, really needs to really think about that a, bit, a little bit more. There is no opinion or cultural relativism or anything to that point. Okay? And that's, that's what, what frustrates me so much with this political game we have to play is that some people pretend that there are opinions that are relevant when it comes to that, um, when it comes to true life support. So basically what I want to really quickly and just explain as to why um, sort of Ian's, what Ian's talking about is not a viable approach when it comes to actually meeting the goals. I understand the need to create these declarations on paper, which we call policies, to say that we, we're going to have these goals, and Ian said it's, it's important that we meet those. Of course, absolutely, right? But without a system referent, you're not going to meet the goals, and it's that simple. When you understand what this system is and what it's actually doing, um, and, it's, and it's ecological um, destruction that is going to be required to service its continued operation, because it is a system, uh, the movement of money is what keeps the system operational, and if, mo- if monetary circulation slows, which means consumption is slowing, uh, basically everything starts falling apart. People lose jobs, people can't keep the lights on and all that. We understand this, but we don't talk about what the system System actually is. It's a circle of money that must keep uh, moving at higher and higher rates of consumption just to keep the whole thing from falling over. And once you understand what the system actually is, not what we pretend that it is, um, in, a, in its system context, you understand that this is an anti-economy and this is something that's taboo to even speak, taboo to know, and the reverse projections across the political spectrum have become so automatic that few notice them. So basically, um, you can't call this system an economy because it's destroying more than it produces. It's that simple. We use the annual output of the planet's resources in eight months, and the only way, the only way that you can reduce reduce the environmental footprint globally and nationally is to move to a system of technical efficiency. Now, how do you do that? The labour for income system is not only becoming more and more inefficient, it simply is not going to be able to keep the majority of people employed on this planet. I have read multiple treatments on technological unemployment, and it is a different paradigm today. You have the exponential increase in machine automation, Humans cannot adapt, not adapt fast enough. And the real critical thing that is ignored here is that we need to automate. It can help us reduce the waste and actually harness this phenomenon called ephemeralisation, which is more with less, which is not recognised by market <coughs> economics, or what would be more appropriate at this term, market theology. Thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. <laughs>